It's the final week of the regular season in high school boys basketball. Tonight on CCX Sports, a Northwest Suburban Conference matchup. The only meeting of the year between the 19-5 Champlain Park Rebels and the 19-5 Maple Grove Crimson. From Maple Grove High School, John Jacobson along with Ryan Iverson. And Ryan, two teams having very good seasons. They're in different sections, so this is the only time that they'll meet unless they would meet in the state tournament should both teams get there. But a good matchup on paper, and I think we're going to see a good ball game tonight. Well, both teams are 19-5, and five, and both teams are playing their best basketball of the year. Champlain Park's on a seven-game win streak, and Maple Grove won 10 out of their last 11. And you and I were just talking about some of the years past, some of the great matchups between these two programs. And again tonight, maybe not the star power if we've had years past, but really good basketball players. Both teams really well coached. I think it's going to be a really even matchup tonight. What does each team look for in the in their opponent tonight that they need to stop to come out with a win at the end? Well, I think you initially you look at Champion Park and just look at their length and their size and um, some really good guard play too. You got Bennett Otto who's kind of their floor general does a little of everything and on the other side I think Maple Grove might have the shooting advantage. Very good from the perimeter. They got some great shooters. They got some good athletes and Rainey at, at the point guard as well. So I, I just think that tonight you want to play smart. Don't turn the ball over and play to your strengths and whoever's able to do that that's going to prevail. Let's look at our key players starting with the Rebels. Alex John coming off a career night as far as scoring against Armstrong last week, having a solid season and improving as the year goes on. Yeah, and Alex is one of those players when he doesn't get in foul trouble and is able to be aggressive on the floor, he can change the course of a game just defensively. Even if he doesn't score, he only averages nine points per game, and they don't need him to get much more than that. They just need him to block shots and dominate the glass. You're talking about he had a great scoring night, 26 points against Armstrong. If they can get 15 and 10, a double-double out of them, Chamlin Park could beat anyone in the state. So if he can stay out of foul trouble, stay on the floor just defensively and rebounding, he can control a game. And for Maple Grove, Nate Adams having a terrific senior year. Golf is actually a sport for college, but he's a terrific basketball player and having a very good year, as I mentioned. I'm hoping he has a great game so I can interview him afterwards and get some golf tips as we come closer to the summer. But he's actually become a really solid basketball player. He's always been a really good shooter, but I think this year, averaging 15 a game, he's added to his game. You know, and, and it's easy to guard a shooter. It's not easy to guard a scorer. And I think he's become a scorer. And tonight, he's going to have to be aggressive and, and get a lot of points and some good looks for Maple Grove to win this game. Senior night tonight at Maple Grove. The Crimson 12th graders hoping to go out with a win on their home court here as we wrap up the regular season later this week. We'll take a break and come back and tip this one off. Champlain Park, Maple Grove High School Boys Basketball next, live here on CCX. Maple Grove High School, Rebels and the Crimson being introduced out on the floor as we get ready for tonight's Northwest Suburban Conference matchup by Wednesday in February. The postseason will begin next week for high school boys basketball. Starts this week, or it had started for some teams already, in girls basketball, including Maple Grove girls in Section 8, won their tournament opener yesterday against Brainerd, and they'll play again on Saturday. Let's look at the starters tonight, starting with the visitors from Champlain Park. Forwards, Alex John, a 6'8 senior. Cato Seeley, a 6'5 senior. Their guards, Jacob Johnson, a 6'4 senior. Bennett Otto, a 6'4 senior. And Jared Walter, a 6'3 inch junior. For Maple Grove, it's senior night. All seniors starting. Post players, Tyler Bourne, a 6'4 senior. Their wings, Kyle Dreyer, a 6'1 senior. Daniel Wall Jasper, a 6'1 senior. And Ryan McGinnis, a 6'6 senior. Jared Rainey, the guard, a 6'1 senior. We'll see Nate Adams, the 6' senior. Uh, quite a bit as well, the 6'3 player, number 14. Well, senior night's always a, a fun night. It can be an emotional night, too, not only for the players, but for the fans and the families. And 
a lot of these players, it's their last regular season real meaningful game, right? They're, they're not going to play anymore. So you want to leave everything you got out on the floor. You want to enjoy it. And you don't want to be nervous either. Just go out and make the most of it. Make this a, a game that you're going to remember for a long time. Almost certainly we'll have a, a postseason game here, but yeah, definitely the last regular season yep. game for these guys here. And then for the guys that aren't normally starters, fun for them to get to in the starting lineup tonight here on senior night, and they control the opening tab. Jared Rainey. Saw quite a bit of him last year, Ryan, and their run into yep. section championship at a very good season. Second leading scorer behind Nate Adams this year. Oh, he's very quick, very fast, but he plays under great control. He plays at a really nice pace. I always talk to young kids, too, learning how to change speeds and directions, and I, and I think Jared Rainey does a phenomenal job of that. Double team on the ball on the wing, and it's knocked out of bounds off yep. Maple Grove, and it's turnover for the Crimson on their opening position. A little wall pressure out high yep. on Wall Jasper, helping force the turnover. After the pass. And you can see Chamberlain Park extending their defense out. I think they're going to try to pressure Maple Grove, try to get them uncomfortable. And a steal by Rainey as he oh. takes it away from Sealy and goes to the basket and scores. Oh, beautiful transition. That's an excellent behind the back. You see a lot of that kind of fancy dribbling really with no purpose. That was a great move, great timing, a nice finish too. Jacob Johnson into the hands of Benedato. Nice dish off for Sealy and one. As Seeley has been sick and missed some games, came back and played last week against Armstrong. It's the first two for Champlin Park. Well, I wish I could be sick and, and look that good on a finish. Look how strong he is, too. You see the defenders just kind of fly and bounce off of him. He's a big, strong kid. That was a great pass, too, by Benedato. Free throw not good, and the rebound to Ryan McGinnis. So we're tied up at two. Wall Jasper, they swing it around left side now. Rainey in the corner. Now top to Dreyer. Looking inside is McGinnis, who'll come back out with the pass. Drive to the basket and getting over and denying the shot was Alex John. And that's why he's so important to what Champlin Park does. That was a great drive by Dreyer there, and it looked like he had an open lane and watch. Alex John out of kind of coming out of nowhere there just that great length and what that does too not only do you get the block but you you, you kind of force people not to want to even go inside anymore after that they, they get intimidated of that turnover for the Crimson Walter and a three-pointer it's Champlain Park its first lead you know, and Benedato hasn't scored, but he's been responsible. Two assists on two baskets for Champlain Park. He, he just does such a nice job, John, with making good and smart decisions with the basketball. Dreyer knocked away from behind by Sealy, but he got it back to the corner. Three ball missed by Waljas for rebound. And into the hands of McGinnis out of bounds off Champlain Park. Yeah, right now it looks like Champlain Park just a little bit quicker getting to the, the loose ball. They look like they're just a step ahead right now in Maple Grove. Inbound is to Dreyer. Cut off and comes back out with the pass to Rainey. Paul Jasper will drive off the glass. Had a good look at it. Another look, and then when it's blocked by John. And in the hands of Otto, doesn't have the numbers, and he'll pull it back out. Johnson to the corner. Walter, another three try. Not good. Rebounded by John. Backing down. Traveled. He tried to put it up and in again to McGinnis, but a travel call. Well, even though he got called for a travel, John, I like that he was aggressive. You'll see a lot of times. He gets an offensive rebound, he'll kick it out right away. And at least he got that. He earned the right to go up and try to make a move there and just shuffled his feet a, a little bit. Sean Bergstrom, Caden Betcher, and Nate Adams all into the lineup for Maple Grove. Adams one dribble, hands off to Rainey, got cut off, back out to Adams. Johnson guarding him, picked up his dribble. He's got to come back out to Jared Rainey. He'll reset on top. Starts a drive, and he traveled. Yeah. I'll tell you, I like that, that matchup of, of Nate Adams being guarded by Jacob Johnson. Jacob's got a little bit of length, 
on Nate Adams, and uh, interesting to see with that shot fake. He's got a great shot fake, but sometimes length can can prevent that uh, defender or the offensive player from going by you. So that'll be an interesting matchup to watch. Knock away by Dreyer, but couldn't quite force the turnover. Tough shot for John inside, won't go. And rebounded by Betcher to the front court. Here's Dreyer putting it up, floats it over. John missed it. Auto rebounds. Hands off for Johnson. Spin move in the lane. Jacob Johnson, not good. Fouls his shot. Not good, but he's fouled. Oh, just relentless on that. He, see what a quick leaper he is, too. We we saw him a couple weeks ago, a game against Elk River. Remember the dunk he had in that game? And watch him miss the shot, but watch him go right back up. Great shot fake. No one he can get the contact. You know, and the difference with a team like Maple Grove, John, in the middle, they just don't have that height where you're worried about getting your shot blocked. We've already seen Alex John block a couple of shots, but also deter a couple of other ones. So with Champlain Park, they're not scared of getting their shot blocked. You can see how Johnson attacked there after the miss. Johnson averaging 16.4 points per game. Benedetto leads the team in scoring at 17. And it's now a 7-2 Rebels lead. And even though Kyle Dreyer's missed a couple going to the basket, I think they need his aggressiveness. They need him looking to attack. Adams deep three ball, not good. Seeley controls the rebound. Pass intended for Otto, completely missed it, but it's a turnover for Champlain Park. Played four minutes of the first half. Maple Grove with just the one basket so far from Jared Rainey. That one doesn't go. Back out it comes. Here's Rainey into the paint. Little step back shot off the iron. Nice chase down of the loose ball by Adams. Trayer back out high. Adams long three. Misses. Rebound. Here comes Champlin Park. Johnson oh, nice. up and in. You see how he stopped on a dime there, too. It looked like might be a charge, but he was able to come to kind of a quick jump stop. No forward movement at all, and a nice kiss off the backboard. Champlin Park is very good in transition, and a lot of times it's because Bennett Otto has that ball and makes a great decision. That time, Jacob Johnson just used his speed, beat everyone down the floor, and a beautiful move. Dreyer back out high to Adams. Into the hands of Rainey from Betcher. A deliberate possession here from the Crimson. Rainey knows what he's looking for. I didn't see it. Now hands off to Adams. A couple of dribbles. Jacob Johnson, very tough there on Dreyer. Couldn't get any further in. Now Dreyer slices through. Reverse try. Not good. And a good underneath look, though, for Maple Grove. And for Bergstrom. Johnson from the wing misses. J and Jared Rainey rebounds. Three on two here for the Crimson. Step inside nice. Otto and scores. I like that Rainey got that and he pushed it. They've been very deliberate in their pace. That time, beautiful Euro step able to get to the basket. Johnson's shot not good. And John trying to get the rebound. Came up over the top of Betcher and fouled. And that's just a great move because you could tell if Rainey had gone forward, Bennett Otto was setting up for that charge. And he's almost sideways when he shoots that basketball. That's a very athletic and tough move that Jared Rainey got in transition. But really, I think Maple Grove, I'm sensing early that they're just struggling in the half court. So I think if they can get some long rebounds or a couple of steals and maybe force transition, that might be their best bet to get some baskets early. Cooper Olson, number 23, Francis Wakoria, number 55, in now for Champlin Park. And Walter thought he had a block there, instead called for a foul, and Rainey will go to the line. You know, and I think that's so important, too, is that penetration, right? It, you, you see, and Dreyer had some success getting to the basket, and if guys are going to extend their defense and play you five, six feet beyond the three-point line, you have to be able to attack them off the dribble and get to the basket. So even though Rainey missed that first free throw, John, I think it was a good sign to see him being aggressive and attacking the basket. 
Second one is good. He's got all five Maple Grove points. They still trail nine to five here. Johnson. Now to Acoria, back out high, now to the hands of Otto. You have to score so far tonight. Now we'll put up a three and hit. We've seen him go on streaks too, and he can he seemingly can't miss. Well, and Maple he, Grove hopes that yeah. doesn't happen tonight. No, and he just plays in that unassuming pace, right? You don't know if he's going to shoot it, attack you off the drill. He's just kind of always that same body language, and he's just he's a, an assassin out there. He's a phenomenal basketball player. I've been so impressed every time we've done one of their games, just how you know he takes care of the bar, his decision making, his scoring, but his uh, his unselfishness too. You know, and his shots always come in nice rhythm, you know, playing through the offense, too. Got the foul on Wakoria, fouling Bergstrom inside. And just a nice set play. Watch him pass this, but watch him continue to move. Nice drive and kick by Johnson. And Johnson and, and Otto play really well off of one another. Like, they know where each other's going to be, and they look for each other. First foul shot up and in for Bergstrom, the junior. And again, Bergstrom does a nice job on the baseline there of getting his hands ready. So many times you see guards penetrate and kick to a big guy. They don't have their hands ready. That time, Sean had a nice job. Hands ready, went right up into the contact, able to draw the foul. It's them both. Rashawn Parker, number 24, now in for Maple Grove. Well, Coria on the block. Back out nicely. Good ball rotation. Otto's three spins out, though. Oh, that was just great offense. You play inside out like that, a lot of times you're going to get good looks. Adams three, not good. He's missed all three of his tries so far. Parker, though, an oh. offensive rebound. A nice putback for the junior. Well, at only five foot 11. Watch him go up high to get that offensive rebound. And a beautiful finish, too. That was not an easy finish. Olsen's pass gets picked off, then Otto breaks up a pass, but Maple Grove gets it back. <laughs> Maple Grove with a chance to tie with a three. Great pass down low, Rainey oh, up and uh -oh. in and one. Terrific entry pass from Betcher. Rainey the finish, and he'll get a chance to tie it up. Well, how do you go against ball pressure? Back doors. Great cut by Jared Rainey. And what an appropriate name on this shot. Watch it rain into the basket. He threw it up, took the contact. And that's what you got to do. You got to take that contact, give the ball a shot to go in, and he's going to get a chance to tie this game for a three point play. Beautiful play. Colin Johnson, his first, fourth team foul, and Rainey. Does make the free throw, and we are tied at 12. Well, kind of after a slow start, too, Maple Grove looked a little lethargic offensively. They didn't panic, took their time, got some good looks, and again, I think penetration, getting to the basket. When shots aren't falling from the outside early, you got to find another way to score. Nice little spin move to get himself free. Olsen missed, but Wakoria there to clean up underneath and score. Well, Wakoria would be an absolute star on a lot of teams. He's playing behind Alex John. But at six foot five, he plays a lot bigger. He's got a big, strong body. You've got to keep him off the glass. Drive, shot comes up short, rebounded by Walter. Back come the Rebels. He'll slow it up. Benedotto, open three is good. Boom. That is not an easy shot. You're running to your right like that. Full speed to catch turn. And he got a quick release on that one, knocked his second three down. Parker will hand off, Adams back to Parker. Pull up from 15, long rebounded by Otto. Hands it off, back out high it goes. Moberg open from the wing for three. And a quick eight points here for Champlin Park in less than a minute. Remember how I said Maple Grove might be the better shooting team? I'd like to take that statement back here. Champlain Park, just beautiful offense again. They got someone going to the basket. Ball never touches the floor. Three quick passes. You swing it around. You always give up a good shot for a great shot. And nine out of ten times, the shot's going to fall. Beautiful offense. Foul out high. And Walter fouling Rainey. There so you got it. One, two. Quick extra pass. And Moberg knocks down the open look. That's not an easy thing to do when you check into the game. You haven't 
really gotten into the flow of the game and all of a sudden you get an open look you got to knock it down that's a tough thing to do nice job by Moberg Walter's second he comes out Jacob Johnson back in Rainey will also get a rest for Maple Grove Adams fake the three now will drive tough oh. shot off the glass not good but the rebound for Maple Grove and Lavelle Williams is in now number 21. Fetcher nowhere to go with it hands off to Adams and there he goes maybe that will get him on track after he missed three early and eight Adams with his first points tonight. Well, that was a good four feet behind the three point line too well defended and he's got great range like that that's a that's a big time shot stops the bleeding here a little bit. Twenty to fifteen. Rebels by five. Otto with the basketball in his hands. Drive. Oh, a little shovel pass through the hands of Olsen and out of bounds. You know, that's the thing when you play with Bennett Otto, especially as a big guy down there, you've got to have those hands ready. He has an unorthodox style, right? That little hesitation. Again, he changes speeds really nicely. And you got to have those hands ready. That was a nice look. And those are plays, too. I think Bennett Otto sometimes could almost be a little bit more selfish, right, John? He gets to that five-foot area, and he's got pretty good length and height. I'd like to see him maybe try to score some of those. Cato Seeley and Alex John back in at the last whistle for the Rebels. Bounce pass off a couple of players and out for the Crimson. Mark Tuxer, 13th year as head coach, 16th year overall with the program. Multiple state tournament yep. appearances for him. A couple of state runner-up finishes to pesky Apple Valley. Couldn't <laughs> beat Trey Jones. Well, join the list. There's a lot of right. people that haven't beat Trey Jones. Shot up. Not good by John Seeley. Powers it up. That's not good. Johnson rebounds. Ball out top. Oh, Adams can't hustle. save it. Terrific effort, but yeah. it's out of bounds. And Otto helps him up. It'll yeah. be Champlain Park with the inbound. You know, it's so competitive, but you love to see things just like that, right? Watch this just... I mean, physical game down low. Nice job by Maple, Maple Grove, playing without fouling. Great effort here. Watch the watch the dive by Nate Adams, and I love to see Bennett Otto pick him up. John takes it to the basket, and he gets fouled by Bergstrom. Well, and a smart foul by Bergstrom, right? Don't give Alex John a dunk or an easy layup that's going to get them pumped up. Make him more earn it from the free throw line. Smart foul. throw up in the just a third team foul on Maple Grove although the second on Bergstrom he'll come out along with Parker Tyler Bourne back in and Rainey also back in for the Crimson second one off rebounded by Rainey Here's Williams. The Williams, nice pass to the block, but John is there to defend on Betcher. You know, and that's what he does, right? He deters those type of, of plays from a player even trying to shoot a layup like that. And that's where his value, I think, just by being on the floor, John is so important and critical to Champlain Park. Nice little spin move shot up, a traveling whistle Ooh. on Bourne. Look at Nick Schroeder, ninth year head coach at Maple Grove. Uh, Osseo High School did a terrific job. Also been in multiple state tournaments as a coach with this Crimson program. Well, kind of fun for me to see both of these guys, both of these coaches, guys I grew up playing basketball with and see them have so much success. And I know they do a great job building these programs. Steal by Adams to the basket and he gets fouled. He'll go to the line for two. He did a nice job. I thought he was going to drop that one off to whoever was trailing there and flipped it over to the left hand, took the foul, and just kind of great pace. You see him looking it off and then watch him use the left hand, forcing the defender to go across his body. Nice, nice job in transition, too. The few times Maple Grove's been able to get in transition, John, they've had success tonight. I was on Jace Miller, his first 16 foul. Dreyer back in now for Betcher for Maple Grove. 
and I'd like to see Dreher stay aggressive. I know he had those first couple, one blocked, another one that he missed, but I think with his quickness and speed, I, I think he can get to the basket tonight. Adams makes them both. Upper Grove sneaks back to within four here as we wind down to five and a half minutes to play in the opening half. John Jacobson, Ryan Iverson tonight from Maple Grove High School. Well, and keep in mind, too, Adams, I know he hit one three. There's a foul away from going to the basket uh, by Bennett for Bennett Otto. Adams hit that one three. Now you hit two free throws as a shooter, a guy that loves to shoot. Those are great ways to get your rhythm. So I'd, I'd keep an eye out for, for Nate Adams here trying to catch fire from the outside. Bob and Jono hand it off. Otto in some trouble. Has to come back out with the pass to Jace Miller. Otto puts it on the deck. Entry pass. John in from the block. Oh, an offensive oh. foul. Whistled again to Alex John. Yeah, that's a tough call, but I, I, I it looked like Alex John kind of went forward. And let's take a look at this. Great job by our camera crew. And you can see it. Let's see if he goes. Yeah, that's that's a that's a tough call. And I and that's why I said in the pregame, a lot of times he gets those kind of fouls called against him. I, I'd like to see him with his length and strength just catch and turn a little jump hook. I don't think anyone can guard it. Rainey will oh scoop my. shot off the glass up and in. That was beautiful. He's had a couple of beautiful finishes so far in the first half. That was the old up and under. Excellent move. Already 10 points for him. Well, Coria catches it down low. Bell Williams trying to steal it as he came over on the double team. But couldn't keep it in bounds, so it stays with Champlin Park. They remain in the lead, but down to just two points. Seven-one scoring run here for Maple Grove. The Johnson traveled. The defense by the Crimson. Yeah. Well, it's pretty evident, I think, John, that both teams are very good defensively. They. They both come into the game averaging, you know, Maple Grove 66 points per game, Champlain Park 70, but they hold their opponents in the 50s. So both of these teams are very smart, very, you know, well coached and, and very disciplined on defense. You're going to have to earn it. Adams three. Not good. And the rebound by Miller. Johnson to Otto. Steps inside, a little floater oh, from 12 beautiful. up and in. And, and there's that pace again, just beautiful pace. Great quick first step. And you watch him cradle that ball as he went through two defenders. And again, that's a shot I feel like a lot of times he would pass that there. And we're going to get a good look. There he looked to shoot. I think he could get that shot almost whenever he wants. But watch how quick this first step is. Right there, cradles it, looks off the defender, and a little floater. He's one of those guys, and I and I can say this, John, because I was one of those guys. When you watch him get off the bus, you look and you're like, oh, he's not, he can't be that good, right? He doesn't, you know, doesn't look like he's that quick or fast or can jump. And all of a sudden, before the game's over, he's got 24 points, eight rebounds, seven assists, three steals, and he's just a player I would love to have on my team at all times. Just a smart, really talented player. And great hair. <laughs> I, I, I miss having hair like that, too. You still might win the hair battle against your old <laughs> AAU teammates here tonight, though, I right? think I got them beat, Coach but that's not, Coach Nick. that's not saying too much. <laughs> the 30-second timeout for Champlin Park. They're up by four here. Down to four minutes to play. Dreher, nice pull-up. Missed it. Good save by Williams. Back out it in the hands of Adams. Johnson got a piece of it. Late whistle and a foul can be called on Jacob Johnson. Well, two things. One, I love how aggressive Nate Adams is. He doesn't care if he just missed one or two shots. He's going to continue shooting, putting that pressure on Champlain Park. But that's a big foul. That's number two on Jacob Johnson. Adams hits the first free throw. Moberg's in and Johnson out. That's not good. And the rebound to Wakoria. So you've got John Johnson and Walter all on the bench now with three fouls for Champlin Park. Moberg 
Shot faked and back into the hands of Otto. Otto spins. Another tough shot. That one doesn't go. And a strong rebound by Bourne. Well, that was just a great, great individual defense there. Just nowhere to go. And Bennett Otto still managed to get a good shot off, and it almost fell. But he couldn't have defended that any better. Rainey on Moberg. Now it's Adams. Draws the defense. Nice dish off. Bourne can't finish. Gets it back up. That won't go. And rebounded by Seeley, who's been strong on the boards tonight. A well, nice drive and kick. And Bourne went up strong and hard. I thought Wakoria did a great job there just being big, playing with his hands straight up and, and really challenging that shot without falling. Wakoria on the block. Well defended by Bourne. Has to go back out into the pass to Miller. Now to Otto, and he's traveled. I'll tell you what, if you're at home watching, you're thinking, are these really travels? That's what, four or five that we've seen already? And whether they are or not, you know, I always tell my players that I coach, you got to adjust to how the referees are calling it. They're calling it tight, so you really got to be a stickler. You can't move those feet at all. Rainey, this one won't go. Follow up, Bourne. Oh. That won't go, but this time yeah. we get rewarded with free throws. I'll tell you, Bourne deserves it after he's been working the last couple possessions. Offensive boards, and he's fighting hard. Nice move by Rainey. Almost got that one to fall. And watch Bourne. Great rebound and goes right up. And almost gets a three-point play. But the big fellow is going to get a trip to the free throw line. Nice job by Tyler Bourne. First him out, and they'll get one more try. So that's two on Wakoria. He comes out to four Rebels with four fouls each. And Cooper Olson, number 23, back in. Bourne gets the second one for the seniors' first point tonight. Here's Bennett Otto, his team nursing a two-point lead at the hands of Seeley. Bennett Otto, deep three, not good, and rebounded by Williams. Lavelle Williams. Oh, and his pass oh. sails to the corner. Dreher had a hand on it, but now it's a break for Champlin Park. Jace Miller able yeah. to finish. Well, nice job by Jace Miller. You can tell he wanted to get rid of that, and no one stopped the ball. Rule number one in transition defense stopped the basketball. Jace Miller with a nice layup. Adams back to Dreher. He'll put up a three and uh -huh. rattle it in. I like how aggressive Dreyer is being that time, and that wasn't an easy shot. Cato Seeley and all six foot five of them was right in his grill and still able to make it. Dreyer averaging 10 points a game. That's his first basket tonight. Yeah. Foul on the full floor on Maple Grove. Here's that look at transition, and again, no one stops the basketball, and you can tell that. Miller wanted to try to pass that one. He had Cato Seeley running with him, Bennett Otto up in front, but he was able to get all the way to the rim and a nice finish. Alex Sever, number five, senior in for Champlain Park for the first time in the pass from Otto. Goes behind him after Severn had made a little move. And Otto passed it to where he had been. That's a rare, poor decision for Bennett Otto, and that's why he passes the ball in bounce. You always want a guy that you can trust, a smart guy that you know is going to take care of the basketball. And Maple Grove, a chance to take a lead here. Yep. And the 115 to play in the half. Rainey. In close. Oh, nice oh, pass. And a terrific pass. Oh, what a and put pass. up and in <laughs> by Betcher. Well, Betcher did a great job. He kept moving. He got himself open. And Rainey, just a beautiful pass. It was almost like he had eyes behind his head there. I don't know how he saw him, but beautiful pass. Severin will drive. Too strong off the glass. Rebound to Dreyer. Maple Grove on the run. Rainey will pull it back out. Got a 30 seconds to play here in the first half. Ryan will be talking to both head coaches at halftime. And Crimson will play for one. 
20 seconds to go and counting. No, maybe not. But we'll get a good pass inside, then back out. Adams with a three. And oh, in and out. Boy, that was a terrific look at it. And a good possession. Now here's Otto trying to slice through the defense. A lot of traffic. And a foul call on Maple Grove. Fouls on Williams, his first six team fouls. So no one on one yet for Maple Grove or for Champlain Park. And now just two seconds to go. They'll inbound him, hand it back to Otto, puts his shot up, not good. Tried to force the referee into a call there. Putting himself into the defender, but nothing came of it. And we go to halftime. Maple Grove really trailed the whole half, and they get a late basket from Caden Betcher to go ahead here. 26-25 at halftime here on Champlain Park. Ryan Iverson down on the floor. He is standing by with Maple Grove's Nick Schroeder. Hi, right, thanks. Coach, Got off to a kind of a slow start there, but you guys got to be proud of how your team battled and didn't rush it either. Kind of took it possession by possession. Now you got a lead in, at halftime. Yeah, I mean, that's the, one of our keys of the game was to play our pace and make them play our pace. Um, I'm really proud of our guys that we're rebounding with them. That was one of our keys of the game is we have to rebound, especially our own end. Um, and I think we're doing a good job of that, and the score reflects it. Um, got to keep them out of transition. They're a really good transition team. Keep them out of the paint on their penetration, and if, uh, if we can do that, I think um, they'll be a dogfight here. How important, too, is, is Jared Rainey's aggressiveness tonight? I thought he got you off to the good start, scored a bunch early, and you guys had success getting to the basket and putting pressure on him, getting them in foul trouble. Well, Jared's key. He has to get in the lane. Uh, he has to draw, too. That's how we get our threes. Um, that's how we get our drop-offs. Our bigs need to score a little bit quicker when they catch it. Uh, but Jared's doing a great job of getting in the paint uh, and, and controlling the pace. Lastly, it's senior night. We talked about the effect it might have on the players. How about you as a coach? Is it emotional for you seeing some of these guys for their last regular season game? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you, you're you with guys for a long time. You, you build relationships. and. And um, to watch them play their last regular season game on this home floor, uh, it's special. And you get emotional seeing me at all come back at an interview at halftime. Always emotional when I see you, buddy. Good luck in that second half, Coach. Thanks. Back to you, John. Didn't say what emotions he has, though. It's 26-25. Maple Grove leading Champlain Park at halftime. More Northwest Suburban Conference boys basketball on CCX run after this timeout. First time I tried Viking and it was laying around my mom's house. And then I kept taking them whenever I could get them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it.
Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Some of the Crimson fan students who are here tonight, Sport 13, Maple Grove leading Champlain Park by one at halftime, 26 to 25. We've looked some highlights from the first half of play tonight here at Maple Grove High School. It's Champlain Park in the lead, 90% of that first yep. half. Bennett Otto with the three, leads the Rebels in scoring tonight and this season. Hits for another three right there. In transition, Jared Rainey, a nice little step to get to the basket. Ryan talked with Coach uh, Schroeder about his aggressiveness so far and how he's been able to take it to the basket and score. That was That's a, been a yeah. key for them. Well, a couple of those kind of beautiful shots there, finishes at the end. Nate Adams got on track with that three-pointer. His only field goal tonight, although he's hit for three free throws as well. There's the scores. Otto with eight. Johnson, four. Walter and Moberg with Three each, Rainey 10, Adams 6, and Dre are the top scores in a pretty low scoring first half. Well, and, and kind of two things. One, we talked about, you know, Maple Grove being the better shooting team. They only hit that one three uh, in the first half, and Champlain Park shot and made a bunch of threes. And then on the flip side, you heard Coach Schroeder talk about it. They were worried about rebounding, and I thought Maple Grove had more offensive rebounds than Champlain Park did, and, and some of that's due to, to foul trouble as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But uh, very, very even first half and low scoring both teams playing really good and physical defense and like I said it's kind of fun watching this old school basketball because you're gonna have to earn your points you're not gonna get any easy ones or you know mistakes breakdowns on defense you're gonna have to really execute and earn every point you get 26 25 Maple Grove up on Champlain Park at halftime more basketball from Maple Grove High School after this timeout on CCX I got some Oxy after I hurt my neck. First, I took them to feel better. Then, I just kept taking them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. For Maple Grove, nursing a one-point lead here at halftime, 26-25 on Champlain Park. To mention it's the final week of the regular season in high school boys basketball. Let's look at the conference standings again, the Northwest Suburban Conference in the West Division Park Center. He's going to win this uh, division. They have a two-game lead on Maple Grove here with Armstrong in third, the Osseo Spring Lake Park, Tutina Grace, and Irondale. On the north side, Champlain Park has already wrapped it up with a perfect mark in, in uh, North Division games at 12-0, three games ahead of Blaine, who they beat last week. Yeah, let's go down to the floor. Ryan standing by with Mark Truxerer. 
Mark, you guys had the lead most of that first half just until the last minute. What was your assessment there? Yeah, I think we're just giving up too many second uh, chance opportunities. You know, our, our defensive boards are poor and they're getting uh, more chances, you know, and, and as a result, they're getting to the line, they're hitting some threes, and uh, I feel like that's the difference. Well, it shows what a good analyst I am. I said Maple Grove might be the better shooting team. You guys were going to dominate on the glass. It's almost like those two roles were reversed there in the first half. Yeah, they're shooting the ball well, uh, you know, but uh, as far as rebounding, that's the plan. we got to rebound, and I think we'll look to do that second half. Foul trouble play a role in that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Your dad's here. I saw he made it, so he's you guys usually do well when he's here. Yeah, good luck in the second half. All right, thanks. And don't get hit by the ball. <laughs> Back to you, John. Right. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for both coaches for taking a moment to speak with us here at halftime. At Chamble Park, definitely affected by uh, the fouls. Alex John, Jacob Johnson, Jared Walter, Francis Wakoria, the three starters and one of their top subs, all with two fouls, had to spend time on the bench, and that uh, affected uh, the Rebels, especially their inside game. And, of course, Jacob Johnson, the key contributor to from the guard position for Maple Grove two players with two fouls each Sean Bergstrom and Tyler Bourne Maple Grove from the line in the first half got there often 11 times 8 of 11 from the line Champlin Park 3 of 4 on free throws they made four threes in the first half Maple Grove with two one for Adams and one for Dreyer And we're ready to go here in the second half. So I think both teams, or both coaches have kind of laid out what they need to do uh, better or continue to do well here in the second half to, to get a win. But I think Champlain Park, a, a bunch of it is Alex John needs to be on the floor, and, and also they need Jacob Johnson on the floor. And if those two things happen, there's a bucket for Alex John. I just don't think there's anyone on Maple Grove that can guard him if he does that move right there. One dribble, nice jump hook. There's nothing that Maple Grove can do other than double him, which will lead to an open shot for a teammate. Adams out high, hand off to Rainey. Puts it on the floor into the hands of Dreyer. Tough shot, not good. Tapped up in the air, and then finally pulled out by Seeley. Ahead to John, puts it up, and a blocking foul. He'll go to the line for two. Couldn't quite get the end one, but now it's John will get rewarded with free throws here. The foul well, on Betcher. Well, and Betcher did a nice job trying to draw that foul because he knows if he's able to draw a charge there, that's going to be number three for John and probably out of the game. It was just a little too close to the basket, and I thought Alex did a nice job just avoiding that contact, too. Yeah, he didn't lean into him. No. You know, to, you know, wasn't overly aggressive to get to the basket. Although. Well, and, and you, you see it. You know, for whatever reason, when you have a big physical specimen like Alex John, we saw it with his older brother, Theo. We've seen it with Dane Danger with Park Center. When guys are really big and physical, they tend to get more calls against them than they do for them. And so you're almost playing against that bias a little bit. And that time Alex in transition does a nice job avoiding that and knocking down the two free throws as well. So he's got his team's first four points, and they're in the lead now by three early in the second half. Rainey's had a good first half offensively. He's got it in his hands now. And I know, I mean, he like I, I talked about it, his, the, the patience that he plays with, I, I'd like to see him be aggressive every time down the floor. I think he's so quick and can get to the basket whenever he wants. I, I, I just, I think they're great when he's able to get to the basket and create. Maple Grove able to keep possession after the missed three and the Betcher offensive rebound. Now it's Dreyer getting by oh, Seeley. Great dish off inside. And good defense by Champlin Park. Didn't allow a shot there for Bergstrom. Yeah. And then Seeley rebounds the miss from the corner. And that's a play if Alex John isn't in the game. That's a layup, right? And you could see the hesitation and the, you know, not wanting to, to go into the, to the shot blocker that time. And... Seeley draws the blocking foul. And beyond Betcher, his second. It's an inbound play. Seeley with the ball in his hands. Walter to Johnson. Otto to Walter. John trying to back his defender down. Goes back out as Adams came over on the double team. Walter to Otto, stripped away nicely by Adams. 
Rainey. Oh. That's the kind of move you're talking about, right? He's just slippery like that. Yeah, he goes slides between two defenders, that up and under. It's just a beautiful looking move. And I'll tell you, he makes it look easy. That's one of those, you go home, go to Lifetime and try that. It's not easy to do with no defenders on you, much less with big guys trying to block it. Johnson oh, great hustle. missed it. Great and hustle. Rainey gets the tie up with John. Jump ball and it'll go to Maple Grove. You know, those are the kind of plays on senior night that you want to remember, right? You sacrifice your body, give every effort you can. Jared Rainey that time by diving for that loose ball, got the jump ball, got a possession, and a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire, that could be a difference in the game. Rainey's pass knocked away. It's a steal for Champlain Park. Otto attacking. Travel. What do you think, John? You think those are travels? I, 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 I don't. I didn't think that one was. But. You know, my, my son Max is in fifth grade, and he does a really nice Euro step, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's no, close. Okay, that one, maybe. Yeah. You just like to see consistency on it. It's either going to be called all the time or, or not called all the time, because I think players sometimes get confused of why one might be a travel and one might not be a travel. Dreyer baseline oh. left. Good look at yeah. him. Couldn't get it to go. Rebound by John. Well, he shows a great just burst of speed and quickness on that first step. Sealy strong oh, to the nice. basket and scores. And you can see he's just got such a strong body. And I'll tell you what, he switches hands from his right to his left there. How would you like to try to take a charge on that coming oh. into the lane? Right. And, and again, when you got touch along with it, not an easy thing to defend. Dreyer back into the hands of Adams. Nate Adams, one dribble. Fetcher and back out to Rainey. The drive and then a dish to Bergstrom. Gets blocked by John. Scramble on the floor for the loose ball. It's into the hands of Seeley. Oh, what a pass. Had to Johnson knocked away. Won't get a foul. Oh, good. Alex John, look at me. Just a tremendous block on one end of the floor. And a fight for it. I thought that was a beautiful pass too by Seeley up ahead to Johnson. I don't didn't think there was any room for that ball to get through there. And there's the block. Watch the great effort here. And watch Seeley thread the needle with his hands right there. Beautiful pass. Free throw up and off for Johnson, who had made his two free throw attempts in the first half. Tyler Bourne in replacing Sean Bergstrom. Well, Johnson only had four points in the first half. He misses both there. And you know, keep in mind, he is their leading scorer at averaging over 16 a game. Oh, and John called for an offensive foul. Betcher took the worst of that, but he did draw the charge. Well, you can tell he's making a concerted effort to draw charges. He's tried to take two earlier. Oh, ow. The people that say basketball is not a physical game need to come watch. A high school basketball game. You can see Alex John frustrated. And again, you can see the difference there, John. He went forward. When he goes straight up and down, and I think he, he's got to learn how to do that because you see his value to his team when he's out on the floor. Deep three for Nate Adams is good. And I'll tell you, Nate Adams comes off. Great set play there. A little elevator screen right up the middle for Nate Adams. But I'll tell you, Maple Grove, you get confidence when you see Theo or Alex John go out of the game in foul trouble because now you know that shot blocker is gone and the other team gets a little bit more confident. Well, Corey up and one. Well, they like the possibilities for this oh, sophomore in the I, future, right? Francis Wakoria. You can see why. Six foot five, only a sophomore. Probably weighs about 240 pounds. He's got great footwork. And that time, watch him hang time here. Just a little bit in the air. Nice play by Seeley. Hangs, takes the contact, kind of double pumps. Uses that strong frame, able to get a three-point play opportunity out of it. How's it born? His third is Wakoria completes the three-point play. And Champlain Park back ahead by three. Now if I'm Maple Grove, I'm looking to drive and attack, see if you can get to the basket. There you go. Like that, Dreyer scores. And that's the thing, you just your whole mindset changes when a shot blocker leaves the game. 
I remember playing with Joel Prisbilla, John, if you remember him. And yeah. Johnson shot not good, rebound. And when he was in the game, you know, we on defense, we felt like it, nothing mattered because he had erased everything. As the ball gets knocked out of bounds. And when he'd leave the game, all of a sudden you'd feel the other team try to attack so much harder because they knew it was a there was that that rim protector was gone. So it, it makes a big difference when Alex John is out of the game for Champlin Park. Sealy out, Cooper Olson back in for Champlin Park. Perennial inbound, Adams, quick three from oh. the corner and hits again. It almost looked like Steph Curry, didn't it? He wasn't even squared up and quick release and he's starting to feel it a little bit as he's made two threes here. Well, Corey at the other end was wide open on the weak side and ties it up. He had a nice dribble drive, unselfish play there and with Corey, a hands ready, quick finish at the rim. Tied up at 36, just over 12 minutes to play here. Adams again. Oh Raining threes for <laughs> Nate Adams here in the second half. He's got nine after the break and now 15 in the game. Well, and I don't wonder if not starting threw his timing off a little bit in that first half. Here in the second half, you can see he's finally starting to get his rhythm here. And watch this three. I mean, there was no space whatsoever. He was facing the baseline. And here's the next play again. A good couple feet behind the three-point line. And you can tell he's starting to feel it. That last foul was on Betcher, his third. So Betcher and Borna both go on to the bench now with three fouls. That's five team fouls already for Maple Grove here in the second half. Missy inside, rebound for Champlet, or for Maple Grove as Rainey gets into the front court. And I like what they're doing. They're, ha they're having three guards up top. They're doing dribble handoffs, and they're trying to see who can get the matchup they want, spreading the floor, and trying to attack the rim. Treyer does there, but missed it. And rebounded by Olsen into the front court. Otto exploding, gets to the basket. Tough shot, didn't go. Rebounded by Maple Grove. Back they come. Dreyer, Adams, three. Wow. What a pass. You know, obviously Adams does the work knocking the three down, but Dreyer, that is a very intelligent play. He could have driven in and tried to force a layup or something and said he knew who had the hot hand. And I like the no call right there. There was definitely some contact. But watch Dreyer wait, wait, wait. He knows all along where he's going with that basketball. And Nate Adams knocks out his third three here of, of, the, of the second half and showing why he's their leading scorer and leading three-point shooter on the year. You know things are good when that tongue starts coming right. out, right? <laughs> A fun night for him, and you, know, you want to play well on that senior night, too. And, and Maple Grove, I'll tell you, you know when it changed? The second, the second that Alex John came out of the game was yeah. that third foul. You saw Maple Grove attack the rim and get a layup, and then you've seen Nate Adams here catch fire. He's up to 18 points in the game, four three-pointers in the second half, so he's been super impressive. The biggest lead of the night here for Maple Grove. You know, this is where I feel if Alex John's going to stay on the bench more, this is where I expect to see Jacob Johnson and Bennett Otto try to take this game over. Otto to Johnson. Blocking foul whistled on Rainey. So now, Ryan, not this foul, but from here on out, Maple Grove in the bon Champlain Park in the bonus the rest of the way at 16 fouls on Maple Grove. Yeah, with 11 minutes left, too. So if I'm Bennett Otto and I'm Jacob Johnson, I'm doing exactly what they just did. I'm attacking. I'm putting pressure on this Maple Grove defense. Say, so see if you can guard me. As you follow me, I'm shooting free throws. Otto missed a corner three. Well, Coria gets it underneath, up and in. Get big, strong move. You see him kind of gather himself, gather his strength. And that was a tough angle. He was underneath the backboard and still able to finish that. That was a big bucket. That's seven points here yeah. in the second half. Champlain Park back to within four. Trey will hand off to Rainey. Splits through the oh. well, try to oh. split through the defenders. Otto steals it, takes it back, oh. and one and a foul on Adams. I was with you, John. I thought Rainey had split that and was going to have a layup on this end. All of a sudden, Bennett Otto goes and 
Look at the athleticism, too. That's not an easy finish. And if you're Nate Adams, you got to foul. If you're going to foul, grab his arm. Don't let him get that layup and the foul as well. But a nice job. Athletic play by Benedato. Missed, but inside is Cooper Olsen. That won't go. Well, Corey offensive board oh. up and in. Has he been just a grown man here in the second half? And a nice comeback here off of that. After trailing, they did a nice job, Chamberlain Park did, to tie in this game. He doesn't have the height of uh, Alex John, but he's got some nice yeah. skills near the basket, doesn't he? And then he gets over oh. and commits the foul, trying to get or go straight up. Instead, fouls Rady. And Wakoria picks up his third. Rady with a chance for a three point play now. Well, and all of Jared Rainey's finishes have been beautiful. Watch him extend this ball. And that's what you got to do against a guy with height and length is you got to either come up with new angles or really use your body to get some separation to get that shot off. That's not an easy shot. Takes the contact and again another beautiful finish by Jared Rainey. And again another shot at that basket. 45 42 Maple Grove back in front after the 6 0 run for Champlain Park. Here's Seeley. Lost the ball. And now come the Crimson with it. Dreyer passed Otto up and in. I thought he was going to go up with the left and get that block, but he switched it over to his right and able to finish. That was a beautiful play. And Maple Grove hasn't ran a lot tonight, but when they have, they've been very successful. Johnson for Wakoria, partially blocked and off Wakoria and out of bounds. I think that was McGinnis. I think yeah. it was. Yeah. He did a great job of recovering on that and challenging it. And beautiful drive and kick. But watch McGinnis went up and then watch him come back over and get the block from behind. And then off the hands of Wakoria, too. Great play by the senior. Rainy long three, not good. Rebounded by Johnson. That would have put Maple Grove up by eight. Moberg to Otto. Johnson, he'll put it on the deck. Lost it. Out of bounds. Oh. Well, Corey out, and Alex John back in now for Champlain Park. Well, and right now, you know, it's with Alex John out, and you can see him coming back into the game. Jacob Johnson and Benedato have such a nice rhythm together. They're just not in it right now. They seem a little out of flux right now. And I think if they can kind of get a, a knockdown three, a drive and kick, something to get their rhythm going on offense. It goes defense on those two guys. It's been pretty good Very, though tonight. Both teams, right. I think, defensively have been outstanding. And again, nothing easy. You know, and we, we've done games where Jacob Johnson's had, you know, in the high 20s where he, he's a phenomenal scorer. He's usually a very good shooter along with a great slasher at the rim. He's athletic. And he's just struggled to kind of get into any kind of a flow tonight. You can see with a five-point lead, Mabel Grove happy here to kind of bring Champlain Park's defense, extend it out, take some time off the clock, and see if they can't get something easy, I think is what kind of their instruction is. Dreyer and Seeley knocked it away from behind. And there's always that fine line, John, of you want to take time off the clock, kind of like a prevent defense, right? You, but you don't want to lose that aggressiveness, and, and that's kind of what's gotten them this lead is Nate Adams, the way he shot and how aggressive he was, and the way they've been able to attack the basket, too. Otto knocks it out of bounds. Walter came back in at that last whistle. Champlain Ooh. Park back to its yeah. original starting five Adams we saw him a, a couple of whistles ago with being looked at by the, the trainer now you can see with the ice bag on that shooting hand and I didn't see what happened if he jammed it against the ball or against another I player or what happened but I, I think his shooting hand was on fire and they had to put ice on it to, to <laughs> cool it off a little bit but yeah that's a that's a big it's a big blow for Maple Grove's offense because he's that one guy that Champlain Park has to extend that defense out no matter what. And it can open up driving lanes for the other guys. Good defense by Seeley. Nine an inside shot. And then an interior pass stolen by John. And we get a timeout here for Champlain Park. That might be it. I don't know if it's it his hand. It? Yeah, it looks like it might be on that right hip area. 
We're hoping the oh yeah okay so holding the ice back against the hip. Well, there's a look at what he's done. This is all just in the second half. So he's hit four three pointers. A couple of them just perfect and beautiful. There's a nice one in transition. And I'll tell you, none, I don't think any of the four even hit the rim. They were as pure as it gets. And a big reason why Maple Grove has been able to take a five point lead in the second half. There's a couple of things that could be sometimes if you plant wrong, it kind of feels like you almost have a little bit of a your hip feels like it's out of socket sometimes a little bit. It can ache. The other thing, too, is you can get a knee, you know, in that thigh hip area, too, which can tighten up on you. But certainly, uh, certainly oh, it looks like he's walking OK. So hopefully he's able to get back into the game. Maple Grove without Adams right now holding a five point lead. Adams with 12 second half points, 18 in the game. Rainey has 15 points for Maple Grove. For Champlin Park, Wakoria off the bench, nine points here in the second half, 11 in the game. Benedetta with 10, nobody else scoring in double figures for Champlin Park. Otto will bring it up here with seven and a half minutes to play in the second half. Only meeting of the season between the Rebels and the Crimson. Down low, John gets in position and he'll go to the line for two as he's fouled by McGinnis. And again, that's kind of a set action right there, kind of four out, one in with Alex John. And he, if he gets that defender on his back, that's all he has to do is just turn, go straight up. And, and he's really, I mean, he's unguardable if he can do that. Missed in this first foul shot. Made three out of five so far tonight from the line. Second one up and in. He's got a nice shot. Nice yeah. looking shot. Good rotation and a, a soft touch too. And as a big guy, I'll tell you, if you can knock free throws down, then teams feel like they don't want to just foul you. And all of a sudden, everything else seems to open up too. So that's a big asset to be a good shooting big man. Well, we saw that last Friday with Zeke Naji, good free throw shooter. Yep. Didn't, didn't get oh. a ton of free throw opportunities that night, but in general, yeah. a good foul shooter. What an underrated play there by Dreyer. That ball was going to be an over a backcourt violation and one-handed dive all out for it to save it. Not only did he save it, but he knew where he was going with it too. That was just a, that's one of those that doesn't show up in any stat line, but just a really important play, saved a possession. Fouls on Jacob Johnson, his third. Just a third team foul for Champlin Park here in the second half with under seven minutes to play. I'll tell you, if I'm Maple Grove, I'm going at Jacob Johnson. I'm going at Alex John. See if I can pick up a fourth foul on either of them. Dreyer, nice shot up and in in the lane. Six points here in the second half for the senior. And he deserves it after saving that possession. John up, and they'll go to the line for two. Well, I'll tell you what, what makes refereeing Alex John so hard is he creates so much contact. We used to always hear that with Shaq, that Shaquille O'Neal was so hard to referee because you don't know if he's creating the contact or what. And I'll tell you, if, you, if, he, if he continues to just be aggressive like that, doesn't lean too far in, he's going to get the benefit of the doubt most of the time. And you wonder, too, with Maple Grove, do you continue playing behind him? And following him you know and are making him earn it or do you think about you know fronting him and having help on the weak side there's you know different ways to defend a really talented big guy Jace Miller back in replacing Seeley John gets one out of two Crimson still with a five point lead we go inside of six and a half minutes to play Oh, that's that's huge. That's a fourth foul on Jacob Johnson right there. Here's a look at Nate Adams. This, thing, oh, this is see. the play where he got hurt when he fouled Bennett Otto on that drive. Watch what, his, see his knee, knee go right there. The, I, I, that's kind of what I was thinking. And that it's almost like a Charlie horse. And it the thing is, is it can tighten up on you in a hurry. And I'll tell you what he's going to feel is not so much now. He'll start getting adrenaline going. He'll be able to play. He's going to feel it tomorrow morning when he wakes up. 
They probably have a nice bruise there. Those are not easy things to deal with. He is back in now here for the Crimson, number 14. Jacob Johnson had to come out with a yep. four foul. Moberg in replacing him. You know, with Jacob Johnson, not only will Chamblin Park miss his offense, and even though he hasn't gotten going, he's a great defender, too, a great pressure defender. John nice. with the yeah. block inside, and then it goes back off of Dreyer and out. Yeah. And that's a play if, if John isn't in there, Dreyer goes up probably strong and gets a layup. So, again, I can't overemphasize Alex John's importance. Otto creates some space and scores. Just a couple buckets for him in the second half, yeah. 12 points in the game. That time he went hard, hit the brakes, nice jump stop. I think he found himself, realized he was wide open, able to take the little baby off the off the backboard. Dreyer hand it back up to Williams. And he missed Rainey that time. Rainey was wide open down by the basket. Williams in some trouble, and Nick Shorter gets the yeah. timeout. Well, smart timeout. I think he. He sends William maybe a little uncomfortable with the ball, and a lot of times that's when turnovers happen. The guy picks his dribble up, and the defense can deny, deny, deny. Smart timeout. All right, two years ago, we talked about in the pregame, we had four of the top ten players in the state, and Mr. Basketball semifinalists on the court. Packed house here. Theo John, McKinley Wright for Champlin Park, Brad Davison, Dewan Pickford for Maple Grove. Terrific game. Champlin Park won. We don't have, as you mentioned, the same star power here tonight. This has been a fun game to yeah. watch, I think. Right? Yeah, it's very evenly matched. Both teams, I mean, that, and I think you give credit to, to both of these coaches. They lost a lot of star power in the last couple of years, and here they are again, 19-5. and five. They find ways to win. And, you know, what great coaches do is you adapt, you know, what your game plan, what your philosophy is to, to the talent you have. And both of these teams... I don't think either is going to win a state championship this year, but I know for a fact in their respective sections, nobody wants to play either one of them because they're going to be well coached, they're going to be prepared, and they got kids like that. Bennett Otto on that side. You got, you know, Nate Adams and Jared Rainey on Maple Grove side with uh, Jacob Johnson too on, on Chamblin Park. There's talent on this on both of these teams. And how about you mentioned those four players? How about how all all four of them are doing so well in college yeah. too at the next level? I don't know if you saw Wisconsin last night, but did you see that football pass by Brad Davison at the end of the game? He, yeah, he threw off, off Reavers' hands yeah. and out. That was a tough loss for the Badgers in a place it's not always easy to win, though, Assembly yeah. Hall, though Indiana's not had a great, great year. Tough to win on the road in the Big Ten. They always say that, and it's yeah. uh, proven true for a lot of teams this year. Here's Rainey. A little hesitation and off. Who's Bergstrom yeah. in the corner and back out. They're a good, patient team. They can afford to work some clock, too, and that's what they're doing here. They get a nice job, Alex John, deterring any type of shot at the basket. Rainey in a lot of traffic and in travel. Good defense Very by good. Champlin Park in the paint. And again, just nothing easy. And I'll tell you, when that guy's down guarding the rim, you're just a little hesitant to, to shoot a shot you normally would take. You know, and I tell people all the time, so what if you get your shot blocked? You got to go at a big guy like that, shot fake, try to get him to pick up his fourth foul. Otherwise, he can completely control a game by not even touching the basketball. Otto has it stripped away. Maple Grove defends yeah. that well. And you just don't see that very often, do you? Him turning the ball over. Rainy, a little hesitation yeah. to the basket. He'll go to the line for two. Who are they going to get the foul on here? It's oh, going to be it. on Miller. I'll tell you what, threw that off just a little bit. Watch Rainey with that pass fake. You can see Miller just kind of reaching, got caught with his hands in the cookie jar. But Jared Rainey, again, I, I when he's aggressive and looking to score, you know, the few games I've seen him when he does that, Maple Grove could beat anyone too because he's that quick and that talented of a guard. 51-46, Maple Grove. Rainey now with 17 points. Inside of four minutes to go. Otto thought about the three. Now we'll put it on the deck all the oh, way yeah. to the basket. Can't finish. John rebounds. He'll put it up strong and go to the line for two. 
Well, and that's why penetration is so big. Even though I know Benedetto is going to be frustrated, he missed that. You draw defenders over to help, and that allows a guy like Alex John then to clean up on the glass. Free throw up and in. And again, I would always rather make someone have to earn it at the free throw line than give them a dunk or an easy layup like that. So I think it's a smart foul by Maple Grove, and Alex John so far has done a pretty good job of of making Maple Grove pay for fouling him. And he's made six out of eight yep. free throws here in the second half. Maple Grove's been able to spread those fouls around. You know, three yep. for Bourne, yep. three for Betcher, three for Bergstrom. And the difference really is Maple Grove's fouls haven't come necessarily with their key players, right? You haven't seen Nate Adams and Jared Rainey pick up those fouls where Champlin Park, it's been some of their better players. Yeah, Johnson on the bench right now yep. with four. I'd like to see Rainey use his quickness on Alex John, try to get by him. Also a traveling call on Rainey. Yeah, we saw, we talked about Adams coming back in. He, he gave it a go, but he wasn't in long. And yeah. back out on the back on the bench now. Well, what something like that can do is it, it can tighten up, and it, it's it's you feel almost like you can't put weight on it, and it. You notice it on every move. The best thing to do sometimes is just to get in the flow of the game where you where you just stop thinking about it. If you're thinking about it, you're going to notice it. Rainey intercepts Moberg's pass. Another key turnover here for Champlin Park. And they continue to trail. Crimson with the ball, leading by three. Under three to go. Rainey in some trouble, but able to hand it back out to Williams. Draws a double team. Williams and huh. Nick Schroeder. <laughs> Again, sensing possible danger called to timeout. 30 second timeout here. There's Adams with the, the ice pack now squarely on the hip. Well, and the thing, the, the other thing too is, to, you know, you know Dreyer, you know Rainey, they're capable of knocking down a three, but they're not necessarily great at doing it. And without him on the floor, Nate Adams, he's that one guy where when you do penetrate and kick, you know he's able to knock that down. So there's just not that same shooting threat with Nate Adams out of the game with that injury. So that's a that's a big loss, especially if Maple Grove is able to keep this lead, John, and he start playing the fouling game. He's an excellent free throw shooter too. But whoever wins this game, I mean, you look, it's probably going to be in the mid 50s. You know, both teams I think walk away feeling pretty good about their defensive scheme and and how hard they play. Both teams I thought have played really hard. And I don't think offensively either team has played bad. I just think it's been kind of like the Super Bowl was this year, an old school defensive battle. Rainey will bring it into the front court with 2.40 to play in the second half. Great pass. John thought he had a clean block on Dreyer instead his call for the foul. And It'll be free throws coming. A great set play out of the timeout, knowing that Champlin Park is, is you know, overextending their defense, playing heavy ball pressure. You hit him with the back door, and that time Dreyer, we've seen him get to the basket and try to pass. That time goes up strong, tries to go over Alex John, able to draw the foul. First time at the free throw line tonight. No problem there. Hits the first one for his 10th point of the game. Yeah, and I was going to wonder if, if, if uh, Coach Tuxer was going to bring Alex John out. With 2.36 left, you can see both number four, Jacob Johnson, and Alex John staying in the game with four fouls. Yeah, at this point, you need him on yep. the floor, right? Yep. Down five. And running out of possessions. Otto will bring it into the front court for the Rebels. And if you're Champlain Park, you don't need to panic. You don't need a three right now. You just need to get a great shot. Well defending. Johnson is Parker out high. Now Johnson into the lane, back out, Otto an open three look, came out, rebounded underneath by Johnson. Yep. And a foul on the floor on Maple Grove on Rainey, and it'll be a one and one for Johnson. Well, nice driving kick, they got a good look. That one was halfway down for Bennett Otto. And some of the problem is you spend so much effort and energy trying to box, box out Alex John. You forget about Jacob Johnson, who's 6'4 and athletic. You forget about Cato Seeley, who's 6'5. So they got a number of guys that can crash the offensive rebounds. Johnson misses the free throw. 
So he's missed three in a row here in the second half, made two free throws in the first half. And that one just looked flat. He's yeah. just got to almost look like he sped that up a little bit, get his legs, get some arc on that ball. Second one up and in. Still a two possession game, though, here with 2.15 to go. Inbound and a nice steal by John into the hands of Seeley. Otto for three oh. up and in, and it's a wow. one point game. How about the confidence and the gusto, if you want to call it that, of Bennett Otto? Coming hard to his right, squaring up. They didn't need a three, but he took it, made it. Now you got a one point game. Rainey picked up his dribble, ball knocked away, almost a steal, but it's into the hands of Williams. Spins inside of Otto. John's there to defend, has to come back out with it. Another timeout for Maple Grove. <laughs> I'll tell you, it seems like every time Lavelle Williams is getting close to a five second call or picks up his dribble, Coach Schroeder gets a timeout called. And, and again, this is where it's a little different not having Nate Adams available. Again, sitting out with uh, part of the second half with that hip injury. And remember, he made four threes to start the game, and just having that threat out there, they're a different team without him. At six points in the first half, and then those four in the first seven, eight minutes here yep. of this half. But not able to go the rest of the way here. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Well, and I'll tell you that they, you know, Champlain Park after that made free throw by Johnson picked up full court and they got exactly what they you, needed out of it. No time went off the clock. They get an unforced turnover. And then with about three seconds after that, Benedato nails that three. So you took very little clock off and you really had a four point possession out of it. So it was just what the Rebels needed to do. And if you're Maple Grove right now, I, I don't necessarily go into a stall game where I try to, you know, take a minute off the clock here. I, You've seen Coach Schroeder a lot of times come out with a set play, a set action, um, and look for maybe another back door or, or a way to get Jared Rainey isoed on a matchup that is good for him to try to attack that basket. But that's where you miss, too, having Nate Adams out there just to space that floor as a shooter, too. Williams will inbound. Into the hands of Rainey. In the front court, 135 to go. Splits between two defenders. Goes up against John and Walter. Oh, they got it on Alex John. Oh, wow. And he will foul out on that play. And a, a really smart play by Jared Rainey. Able to break the trap there, split that double team and just goes hard right at the rim. And I'll tell you, if you can go into the body of a shot blocker too, sometimes that limits how high up they can get and extend on that. And I thought Jared did a nice job that time. And fifth foul on Alex John, that's a, not only do you get uh, shots out of it. They were, they were saying it was a one and one, wasn't he? Well, I guess before the shot yeah. is what they had whistled. And he makes the yeah. first one during the second. He's six yeah. out of seven from the line tonight. Bergstrom back in for Maple Grove, replacing McGinnis. Second one also good. Still a one possession game, three point lead from Maple Grove with under a minute and a half to go. You get if you're Champlain Park, you don't need a three pointer, you just need to get a good shot out of this. Walter drives, nice dish for Seeley up and in. Timeout Champlain Park. Smart play, nice job by Jared Walter. They're getting into the heart of the defense, drawing some help and dropping it off. And again, Cato Seeley with that left hand finish. That's a that's a big time finish. And again, you did it relatively quickly and you get it back down to a one point game. This allows you then to pick up full court and extend that pressure. And we see Maple Grove struggle with that the last time that Champlain Park was able to do that. 55-54, each team one game left in the regular season. Section playoffs come next week. Champlain Park, part of Section 5-4A, where Park Center will be the top seed. Champlain Park should be the number two seed, yep. almost uh, assuredly. And Maple Grove, probably the one seed. Oh, I don't know, oh, but yeah. uh, you know, he said, you know, in QRF, we're ahead. 
of Buffalo and St. Michael Albertville, but they lost to both those teams yeah. earlier in the season. He said, you never know how but, people are going to vote. And I think it was early, too. Yeah, I, you know, right. I've seen St. Michael Albertville play a number of times this year, and the, I, I'm sure Coach Schroeder would not mind that matchup coming now. And Buffalo, I'll tell you, we have the Buffalo head coach is here and their staff, and uh, Todd Bauman, the football coach and former Viking, is here as well. He's on that staff. They're scouting Maple Grove, and Buffalo's got a very talented team. But I, I would imagine Maple Grove will be the one seed, and, and uh, it should be a competitive, competitive region. Both both regions will be competitive. Inbound pass. Johnson almost had the steal. Was it off? Oh. It's off of Dreyer. No, they're gonna. Yeah, they are staying off Dreyer. Wow. Turnover for Maple Grove out of the timeout. And Johnson settled with some foul trouble. Makes a yeah. huge play there. Those long arms that he has. Here's Otto, open three for the lead, short, rebound by Dreyer, and then a foul on Otto. I'll tell you, Maple Grove's extremely lucky. After the turnover, little set play out of, out of bounds. He got Bennett Otto, he got a great look at it. He just hit a three from that same spot, and that time just a little bit short. And it's going to be bonus here for Dreyer and Maple Grove the rest of the way. I'll tell you, Drayer's had a nice game tonight. Lots of energy. Had a big three in the first half. He's had a couple of baskets here. And, you know, he's had a, his hands full, too, guarding the guards of, of Champlain Park. Done a nice job defensively as well. Second one up and in. He's made four straight free throws down the stretch here. Again, a three-point yeah. game with a minute to play. And I'll say the same thing. I don't, I don't think they need a three here at Champlain Park. If they get it and it's a good shot, great, but they just need to get a two. Johnson attacks and scores. Back to a one-point game. 45 seconds to go. <laughs> and you can see. Backcourt foul on yeah. Walter. Coach Tuxer saying when Lavelle Williams caught that, get up, foul him, make him beat us from the free throw line. You know, Rainey's an excellent free throw shooter. Dreyer, an excellent free throw shooter. Yeah, those two guys, between the two of them, are nine for yeah. nine in the second half of the line. Williams has not been to the free throw line tonight. Last of the one and ones. They'll be in double bonus, and he calmly sinks that oh. one. And that's what you got to do. A nice job by Williams, just stepping up. I always love that. If you're a player that the other team wants to foul, there's no better way to send a message than to knock your free throws down. Second one off, two point game. Rebels with the basketball with 40 seconds to go, 58. 56 Maple Grove. Otto looking inside. I will give it to Johnson. Back into the hands of Walter. Under 30 seconds to play. Johnson by Rainey. Too hard off the glass. Loose ball up and in by yeah. Seeley to tie it up. We got 18 seconds left. Plenty of time. Nothing to panic here. I'd spread the floor and I'd, I'd have Jared Rainey. Try to win this game for you on senior night. See if he can get something going to the basket. Under 10 seconds to go. They're going to let it play out. Rainey will drive. Lost the ball to Williams in the corner. And they're going to run out of timeout. Run out of time, and we are out of time, and we go to overtime. Well, that was, that's, that was a, kind of a bizarre ending. That's where Lavelle Williams has to know time and clock. That ball kicks out to him with two or three seconds left. He's got a she had an open look at three. Take a look at it again as Rainey started to drive, just kind of loses his balance here, yeah. Ryan, I think, as he cuts to his left. Yeah, ball comes, and that's where you got you gotta you gotta be aware of circumstantial basketball. And you can see Coach Schroeder telling him, you gotta know, you gotta shoot that. So we get an extra four yeah. minutes on the clock, tied up at 58. Well, I like what, what Champlain Park's done the last couple of times. They put the ball in Jacob Johnson's hands, and he's made everything happen. He got a layup drive into the rim. That time had a nice drive. And again, the defense collapses. And again, Cato Seeley, his big body, able to get that rebound and finish with the left hand to tie it up with about 20 seconds left. And interesting, too, Maple Grove didn't call a timeout with 20 seconds left. They, and, and you see more and more coaches doing that. Not letting the other team get their defense set up. Let's look to attack. And uh, just didn't quite work out right. I, I like what they tried to do, get Rainey attacking the basket. He lost his balance a little bit.
Wakoria, Walter, Johnson, Seeley, and Otto on the floor for Champlain Park. And for Maple Grove, it's Parker, Bergstrom, Dreyer, Rainey, and Williams. Wakoria will jump here against Bergstrom. Everybody's happy where everybody's set. We're going to finally jump this up. Well, Corey <laughs> slaps it into the hands of Seeley. Johnson out of the block. Well, Corey muscles it up. They'll go to the line for two. Alan Bergstrom is his fourth. And it, it seems like Champlain Park has made just as a concerted effort to get Wakoria in the ball and get him the ball down low. and. He's delivered tonight, too, and really nothing you could do defensively. He just went in, went strong, able to draw the contact. Aggressive on that free throw. Yeah. And it was attacked the rim and off. Second one up uh, is also off. And the rebound to Bergstrom, so he stayed tied after the opening possession of overtime. Brady's had a big night, 19 points for the Crimson. He gets into that lane. I'd like to see him look to score that. Because it seems like with his quickness and agility, he can get to that basket whenever he wants to. Double team and a steal. And here's Johnson. Wakoria well, offensive rebound and puts it back in. Walter gets the steal, and Wakoria well, the finish after the miss, and Champlain Park has the lead. Well, nice job by the big fella hustling down. You tell your players all the time if a guy's got a transition layup, don't assume he's going to make it. You hustle, get yourself in position. Sometimes you'll get rewarded with an easy one. Nice job by Wakoria. Well, Williams handing off and able to get it in the hands of Dreyer, or excuse me, of Rainey. Three ball oh. up and in. How about that for Rashawn Parker? Second basket tonight, his first three, and Maple Grove's wow. in the lead. How about that? <laughs> Big time shot. Seeley to Johnson. Walter. Seeley back out. Otto guarded well. Now he will tack. Shot up, and they'll go to the line for two. Well, Crimson thought they were straight up on defense with hands, right? But look at that last three a moment ago from Parker. Oh, but that, that was deep, too. And he went right into his rhythm there. Nice confidence, knocks it down. And Benedetto, smart move, went hard, went into contact, able to draw the foul. Fouls on Bergstrom, that's his fifth, so he's out. And McGinnis back in for Maple Grove. I don't only one free throw attempt tonight. He missed it on that end one earlier in the half in the early in the second half. But connects here. Well, that was also the play that Nate Adams got injured. Right. On. It's in both Champlain Park back in front. Crimson front court down by one. 2.20 to play in the overtime. Williams guarded by Ottawa, handed off to Dreyer. Dreyer attacking, oh. and he was fouled by Wakoria. Go to the line for two. That's four on Wakoria. Well, again, Dreyer just showing, showing that ability here tonight, John, to turn that corner, and he's got that quick first step. And a nice job there. You see him shift that ball to the outside and able to take a little bit of contact. And again, I tell you, if you could go strong like that, referees more often than not will reward you. And he's shown the ability to knock down free throws as well. Betcher back in for Maple Grove, 35. Dreyer solid here late in the game. Six free throws made. Three baskets as well in the second half, and now has 15 points. Yeah, he's had a nice game. 
Two minutes to play in the overtime. Maple Grove back in front. Otto looking in for Wakoria, who's being guarded aggressively by McGinnis, who picks up the foul. And Wakoria will go to the line for two. And not necessarily the worst foul. You know, we just saw Wakoria miss those two free throws, but you know, you don't want to get you want to wait and save those to when he's about to get a layup. You don't necessarily want to fight fight him for a position. First one is in and we're tied up. Yep. Well, this is where what's big here is free throw box out. You got Jacob Johnson and you got Cato Seeley underneath here. They're going to be fighting for an offensive rebound if there's a miss. So you really got to do a nice job. Good communication. Know who's pinching and who's got shooter and securing this rebound if there is a miss. This is critical. Williams back in for Maple Grove. Corey hits them both yeah. this time, and Champlin Park up by one. I'll tell you, as, as rough as those two that he just shot look, those two looked equally as good. Nothing but that. He buries them. Beautiful. Rainey will hand off to Williams. Dreyer attacked on a similar play a moment ago and yeah. scores again. Last time from the free throw line, this time the layup. Yeah. And he uses both hands really, really well. We've seen him use the right. That time finished with the left. Excellent job. Walter back out Bennett Otto into traffic now a to Otto into the paint tough shot yeah. up not good Wakoria up strong up and in and again against Champlain Park just that split second defense goes to collapse on Bennett Otto and it leaves an offensive rebound over well, McGinnis a good look top of the key couldn't hit the three and then we get a foul on Maple Grove as Johnson is bringing it up court and he'll go to the line for two. I remember yeah, they're shooting two. But Bennett Otto got to the heart of that lane, took a little five foot contested jump shot. And the problem as a defender is you watch that. And there was the missed three. You're going to see the foul here in transition on Johnson. Dreyer fouls oh. Johnson. Johnson misses the first foul shot. He has struggled yeah. from the line here in the second half now just one out of five which is surprising because he's normally a very good shooter second one also out well Corey had tipped it but it's into the hands of Brady so Champlain Park still leads but just by one instead of perhaps two or three there's Rainey putting it on the deck he'll go right out well Corey missed it and well Corey rebounds hands it off for Bennett Otto. 40 well, seconds to go. McCoria did a nice job of just being big that time and forcing Rainey to alter the angle and the spin that he needed to shoot that with, and it caused the miss. Otto hands to Johnson under 30 yeah. seconds to go, and then we get a foul. Dreyer fouls Johnson. Yeah. Put him at the line until he can yeah. knock him down, regardless of yeah. his past history at the free throw line. He has uh, struggled here tonight at Maple Grove from the line. Sometimes it's just confidence. It's just rewiring re your brain, have a short memory, and know that you're a very good shooter. And there, that one looked a lot better, a little bit more calm, a little more fluid. Got a little bit more arc on it, able to bury it. Second one off. Rebounded by Rainey, two-point game. Ahead quickly to the basket. Oh, the missed shot and a follow up and in by McGinnis. Ties it up. Down under 20 seconds to go. A surprise Maple Grove got that easy of a look in transition. Champlain Park a little slow to get their defense set up. Nice job by McGinnis on the follow. Under 10 seconds to go. Ball in the hands of Bennett Otto. He'll go up with the shot up and in. <laughs> Maple Grove gets a timeout. They'll probably put a little time left on the clock, but how about that shot from the senior? Oh, what poise. Hadn't been a great oh. shooting night for him, and how about this one? A look at the basket, yeah. first of all, by McGinnis following up after the miss oh. by Parker. And a great yeah. finish for McGinnis. And then a great crossover, and again, I mean, that's just, look at that defense. You couldn't play any better defense than Dreyer did. And Bennett Otto using those long arms, that tall frame. I thought he gathered himself, got his legs, beautiful raindrop. And I'll tell you, he did exactly what you want to do. You want to get that shot off with about a second or two, so you maybe have enough time for a tip in or a quick offensive rebound. 
but you don't want to leave in a lot of time for the opposing team and all net as the senior comes up big on the road here at Maple Grove. What a what a fun game. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> now on the scoreboard they, they count down the time left in the timeout so it'll be interesting to see when they put the actual game yeah. clock back up how much time it, they put on the clock. It appeared like in between two and three seconds yeah. if, if the timeout was was granted right away which I, I'm sure it was sometime but around two seconds so you're going to get the ball in the baseline you're going to have enough time to get a pass in and then maybe one more quick pass and a decent look out of it if you're Maple Grove and if you're Champlain Park you don't want to foul make Maple Grove hit a tough shot and there you can see number 14 Nate Adams back into the game he can make that hip go for two <laughs> seconds right he's going to inbound here see how much time they still have not put the time on the game clock to we'll see how much it actually is it still reads all zeros and now full time out taken by Mark Tuxer for Champlin Park. More boys basketball Friday night on CCX. Now the Northwest Suburban Conference game. Armstrong will host Blaine. Two pretty good teams. Good season for the Falcons under first year head coach and Armstrong alum John Bryant. They close out the season at home. It'll be Jay Wilcox, Greg Miller, and Allie Arlt on the call that night. How fun for uh, Coach Miller, of course, getting the call, his old team. And, yeah. You know, it's right. pretty, pretty fun for him, too. John Bryant, you know, I, I played a lot of basketball against him, too. He's a competitor and a smart, tough basketball player. And you can see his team really starting to reflect their coach's personality. Of course, beating Park Center earlier in the year, too. And, You know, and, and I always think, too, in situations like this, if you're Maple Grove, this is where a coach can be so important. Obviously, you're drawing up, a, trying to draw up a great play, but just giving your players belief that you can win. Hey, we're going to do this. Everyone get your heads up. Be confident. We, You know, and you practice these type of game situations and practice a lot. All right, 2.3 seconds on the board. Adams will inbound here for Maple Grove. John defending the inbound. Timeout for Maple Grove. They did have one remaining. You know, this is where a lot of times you get someone that's in the actual front court coming up high to get the ball, and then you get a guard. You remember the old Valparaiso play that we saw yes. in the NCAA tournament? Those. Those are really common. The other thing you can always try to do is, you, you know, we, we've seen Wisconsin try to do this in, in college with Brad Davis, and you try to draw a charge with the guy on the baseline, too. Those are two common ploys that you'll see at the end of a game to try to get a, a quick foul or a good look at, uh, at, a, at at least a decent look for a game winner. The question is, do you have enough time to get all the way down to the other baseline with well, 2.3? Remember, it doesn't start until the, someone touches it. Yeah. So if you can get it at half court, a lot of times you have a time to get one pass and maybe a quick dribble and then at least you get your momentum going towards the basket right the, the hard thing is if you're coming away from the basket then you got to try to shoot it so you want to try to get your momentum going towards the basket so you can get some strength and, and at least square up and and get a decent look out of it all right we'll do it again I think we'll actually inbound this time with 2.3 seconds to go it again. It'll be Adams to put it in play for Maple Grove. Oh, go the baseball oh, pass down yeah, the middle. Yeah. Otto intercepts yeah. it intended for Dreyer and Champlin Park will come away with the win on the road oh. in overtime as they defeat Maple Grove 69 to 67. I'll tell you Dreyer had the step there if that ball just had a couple feet of, of high you know height on it and got over Bennett out of that might have that might have been able to work there. Great play call in here you can see Dreyer run deep and if that ball just makes it over the top Dreyer's got a layup there. That was a great great play but a smart play by Bennett Otto too. 
Terrific win for Champlain Park. They're 20 after the season. They're now 20 and 5. Maple Grove drops to 19 and 6. We'll take a break. Come back. Our post game from Maple Grove High School after this timeout. I try to keep up with what these young people is is doing and knowing. I was at work and I was I just got a text from a number that I didn't know. I sent him a text. He texts me back and say, "Who this?" <laughs> and I just thought that was the funniest thing. The next few weeks, you just made fun of me, like would answer the door and say, "Who this?" Who this? Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America, America let's, let's do, do lunch. lunch. Meals on Wheels gives me a chance to be totally selfless. More than the food itself, a lot of seniors don't have family. So just to have someone to talk to, just to say, hey, how was your day? That means so much more than a meal could ever mean. We have to look outside of ourselves to be that lifeline to other people. It's worth it. I've been delivering Meals on Wheels to Leon for 13 years. It's always a pleasure to see you. Leon has definitely inspired me to put more into my relationships. He really cared for his wife, who was ailing for quite a while, in such a touching way that inspired me to be a better person. Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America, America, let's do lunch. lunch. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney and I'm your dividend. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science. After that, I'm going to get my law degree. Then I'm going to come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined. It's, it, it's going to happen. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. Great game here at Maple Grove. Champlain Park wins it in overtime. What a terrific finish this was. And Maple Grove led for much of the second half after really trailing the entire first half for the most part. Took a one-point lead into halftime. Maple Grove really came out strong in that second half. Nate Adams with those four three-pointers early. But then he went out with an injury, and uh, his loss certainly made a difference down the stretch. He didn't have his outside threat, but his back and forth we went, and finally to overtime. And then Bennett Otto hits that little floater with three seconds to go to ultimately give Champlain Park the win. They're 20th of the season. They have won eight in a row as they get ready to wrap up the regular season later this week. Maple Grove with one game remaining as well. Their sixth loss of the season. But it was a good one tonight and uh, a fun one to watch for you at home. Section girls basketball play gets underway as I mentioned this week. We've got a TV game for you coming up Saturday. Park Center is the top seed in Section 5-4A. If they're able to win their uh, Section quarterfinal round game tonight or if they did they will play a game at one o'clock as the top seed at Blaine High School we'll have that one for you Saturday night at seven here on CCX Sports the next week is section boys basketball playoffs get underway with the quarterfinal round early in the week and semifinals already by the end of next week and then uh, one of our favorite weeks of the year coming up in two weeks Section final week, we have section 6-4A on that Wednesday. And then on Thursday, the 14th, it's the 8-4A final. 
if Maple Grove should be there. And uh, Friday up at Rogers, the 15th, always a terrific atmosphere and game up there and almost always two local teams. As I mentioned, Park Center and Champlain Park will undoubtedly be the top two seeds when the seedings are announced later this weekend as we get ready for section basketball play at 5-4-A. Some other good teams around the area having uh, strong seasons in the, the other classes as well. And class 3 and, and 2 with the teams with the chance to go some distance in the postseason as well. And that holds for girls basketball as well. We're one of the top teams in the state in Class A and Heritage Christian Academy has had a terrific season in 1A and they're in four, Section 4A and Class 1A and they'll be uh, tough to a tough out in their section coming up in the postseason. Bennett Otto has come back out of the locker room and he is standing by now with Ryan Iverson in our postgame. games none bigger there than they and how'd that feel it was a great feeling I mean I played with these guys uh, all the way up through my uh, through my elementary and middle school days and it just felt great to against these guys have you had a game winner before like that I haven't this is my first one in high school so it feels pretty good and then of course you, you make that shot two seconds left they ran a pretty good play right. and it looked like he had a step there you playing a little defensive quarterback there and read the play made a big steal there at the end right yeah he was just saying nothing deep and I was kind of the safety valve and I read it and just picked it off, so yeah. Tonight, foul trouble, I thought, played a big role for you guys. Jacob Johnson, and of course, Alex Paul and foul. Foul trouble, your offense never seemed to really get going, but these are the kind of games where you just tough it out and you find a way to win. How big is that for you as you go into the playoffs? It means that we can fight through adversity. You know, we're gonna need that in the playoffs and you never know what the playoff atmosphere is gonna be like. And so yeah, we fought through it and battled through adversity and got the win. The shot left your hand, did you know it was good? I did. I did. It felt, it felt really good. So. Best feeling in the world, isn't it? For sure. Right, well, congratulations getting a big time win Thank on the road. You. Thank thanks, you. Bennett. All right, back to you, JJ. All right, thanks very much. Uh, thanks to Bennett Otto for spending some time with us. He had 19 points. Great contributions from, uh, you know, Francis Wakori had a big second half off the bench for uh, Champlain Park. Had to come in when Alex John got into foul trouble, and he contributed with six baskets and a couple of three free throws as well. He had a big game. Cato Seeley, some big baskets down the stretch. It was a team effort for Champlain Park as they were the team that had to rally in the end and come away with the win. Well, that'll do it for a telecast tonight here from Maple Grove High School. It was a good one. Hope you've enjoyed all of the television coverage. For Ryan Iverson and all of our crew, I'm John Jacobson. Thanks so much for tuning in for our coverage of high school boys basketball. Champlain Park, a winner in OT tonight on the road, 69-67 at Maple Grove.